involved with clients, right? They buy their own materials, they want the lowest price, and so on and so on. Before we do any of this, yes. the first, first thing what we're gonna do, open up the boxes, we're gonna make sure that our product is not warped, and that will determine how big our grout lines are actually gonna be. Talking about warped is same as when you buy a two by four stud or anything like that. What he's talking about is this plane of the tile here. You, especially if you're gonna start doing a herringbone pattern, this tile has to be a premium product and it wants to be a flat tile. You'd be fighting it the whole way if this was a bow tile. <laughs> Forget to collapse the ridges under there, buddy. Did you bring him or did I invite him? Did you forget to collapse the ridges? <laughs> Guys. I'm seriously, like second guessing this. Oh my God. Hey everyone, I'm Mac from Bro Style and Trim, and we're gonna talk right now about centering a herringbone, finding the center of a herringbone pattern. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is a common mistake when doing herringbone is um, people will think that this is the center of the pattern, maybe that's the center of the pattern, it's not. Herringbone is tricky. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find the center of your tile this way. So for this, for instance, this was 11 and three quarters, so five and seven eighths over. Here is the center. I pulled that number the same over here, five and seven eighths. Simply just draw a line, like I did there, and now you have the center of your pattern. When it comes to the pattern, one of the common mistakes that people will do is they will not align these tiles perfectly square. Now that you got your center line, most of the time, what I will do is I will line it up with my floor, I will take out these tiles, and I will run a straight edge. As long as all your corners are touching and you have this space. You know you have a fluid pattern at that point. Exactly, and it's yep. perfectly square. These are sweet. So now that we have the center mark of our floor laid out, we've marked it on the wall, I put a tick on the floor over there, we've shot the laser through it, we've lined up the center of our herringbone pattern that we already had marked out. Fairly straightforward install, it's just a matter of starting to put it together, now we're going to start cutting into this wall and just keep the, keep the pattern moving. Get that nice and flat and then I'll start to work it once I know that that tile's sitting at the height that I'd like it to be. A lot of times we worry about the thin set oozing out and we think that's maybe, you know, somebody that's starting off, maybe they think it's, oh, I'm messy, so you're trying to, this thin set is oozing out, that means you, you, it's all covered. You're doing something right. But yeah, you just want to do make sure that you're keeping yourself honest as you go. Making sure your lines are all square. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to keep checking. When you push enough of these by hand, your fingers will hurt, so this is key. Always get yourself a gun. Hey guys, thanks for paying attention to this uh, video on doing a herringbone floor. I'm Mac from Burroughs Tile and Trim again. I uh, hope you learned something. If you need any more knowledge from Perfect Level Master, check out their Instagram and their YouTube. You can see a lot more content on everything from showers to floors to niches and a lot more, so be sure to check them out.